So you become really proficient at double cross level moves, or maybe you haven't, but you have decided that double cross level moves is for you. Today, I'm gonna to show you something that you are going to want to learn. This is an advanced level item for the double cross level moves specifically. Let's get into it. I got three things to show you here. Let's go. All right, don't forget trading is risky, but if trading is for you, this might be the place for you. Make sure that you are following us over here on our Instagram, especially, and our other locations on social media. Smash that like button right now, or you're gonna lose money tomorrow. I promise it's gonna happen. All right, let's get into it right now. Check this out. So, double cross, double moves. People ask all the time, what do we do about these? How do you decide the difference between setups like these? You've got two double crosses here in place, but how do you know which one's a reversal? How which, which ones do you know that are continuations? I have made this very very clear in the past, it should be review real quick. This is going to be a continuation, right? Because there is no, there's no setup around it. There's no PRZ. Now you might say, well, there's one right here. Yes, but at the time when this formed, there was nothing there other than targeting, okay? Uh, this one right here, this one has formed right inside of a cipher. So what is that going to tell us right there? We are going to be reversing that position, right? So let's play into this here real quick. I'm going to show you guys some tips around how we can execute on a double cross double move. I'm going to show you um, two ways to play this for the double cross double moves. Let's go to a blank screen here real quick. And I'm going to uh, sit here and show you one thing real quick. All right, so let's draw up some double crosses here real quick. All right, so let's say these are double crosses. Those aren't perfectly drawn, but here's what we've got. So you know that price comes in. What we wanna do is get that move here, measure from the pivot to the bottom, and we're gonna get that double move to the top, right? So. Um, those of you guys who are trading with small accounts, I have had, had a lot of folks have you know some scenarios where they're like, yeah, but oftentimes this comes out of it first and then we come back through and we make the move. That is 100% true. So I'm gonna show you a little trick about that. You know there's a two try rule on a double cross double move. The majority of the time, two try rule. Always first write that down. Two try rule. If you haven't done it already, you should already have this in your notes. But how can you execute on one of these to reduce some of your drawdowns? If you are a person who, if you're trading with a small account, absolutely a afraid of any kind of losses whatsoever. Here is a specific technique around double cross double move. First of all, anybody who's watching this video right now on double cross double moves, please make sure you go watch the other videos first on double cross double move because if you do not know those rules and you're applying this only here today, you're gonna be lost. This is not how you execute a standard double cross double move. This is specifically a technique around double cross double moves if you want to kind of finagle it. So we know that we've got the two try rule, but what if in this scenario where we enter in on all right, so I've redrawn these here. So price comes into it and we go and we take our entry. Let's do an orange for our entry. So let's say that on this second cross, we enter in and we're gonna do an orange here for our entry. So there's our entry. Again, we're pretty close to it. Now, oftentimes you might be behind on it, that's okay. Our ideal is right there, right? We want dead on in the center. This is that targeting. We wanna get in right here. Okay, but let's say that we miss a little bit, doesn't really matter. Where is our stop? Our stop, we already know. If I'm going to the long side because our move has come from the from the bottom up, then we know we're going long. So our stop is going to be below the two crosses, right? Here is our stop down here. Now, it, oftentimes price is gonna come right down here. We're moving up, uh, 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 we stop out, kind of you know toots around, then comes up and then boom, we make our move. Right, so where is our second entry? So our two try rule here, um, let's go back to my orange. And so my second entry is going to be right here to get long. And we're gonna make that measured move out to our target up above with our stop right here. Now, on that first move, let's say that we had entered in on two contracts. So first try, we were in, actually I don't wanna confuse that. Let's say that it was, um, we went four contracts just for um, not being confusing uh, when we're drawing this up later. So we're in four contracts on our first entry. Then on our second entry, can we be four? Pop quiz. No, we've gotta be more, right? So we have to at least be five, but let's say that on this next one, I'm entering in, and on this next one, I'm gonna go six contracts. Boom, I'm in, I'm taking it up long. Now, if we enter in right here, where's our stop? Still, same location for our stop. That does not change, still below the crosses. So, you know, our worst case scenario, we have lost Part one, we lose this little section right here. Part two, we've lost this little section right here. This is your max loss on a double cross double move is two sections of this, okay? One and two, 
absolute max loss on a scenario where double cross double move doesn't work for you this is your risk the reward is much greater that is the beautiful thing about double cross double move but imagine that you didn't take this one so here is the new technique i don't say new but uh, introducing this technique for anybody who cannot afford any kind of loss you maybe you've already taken some drawdown and whatnot you've smart restart with a small account whatever your situation is or maybe you're doing a some kind of small account challenge or joining in on one of those trader funding programs and they've got all the lockdown rules then what you're going to want to do is you're going to have to be more specific in your double cross level moves maybe you can't take the first trade okay don't take the first trade assume that we break down okay and as price comes back through you've got two opportunities to enter in on this where you can really maximize your wins two things one you can enter in as we come into the stop zone so you've got the stop zone here now entry number one for again small contracts toe in the water only you should not be getting big right here okay toe in the water right here okay all other rules apply trade this like it is a dot entry you're coming in we enter in at the stop zone part one part two as the position moves up here is two you get two entries on what would normally be a two try rule entry now you could technically on a two try rule do this as well i wouldn't recommend that because again you've already put risk on the table from here to here from the prior trade however if you are initiating right off the bat you're able to put on the risk on the second part plus you've got things more in your favor as we start to come back into this area so two areas now if you don't want to take this one you really just like absolutely no risk to you don't take this one then don't do toe in the water right here and only enter in right here as we break back through that double cross double move zone line and we enter in long you can enter in right there uh, you do not have to do the six contracts now you can start with whatever your beginning was whether you're two contracts three contracts four or if you again you're a big player you want to go in eight you're working your way up to 12 or 16s you're trying to get to 24s in the end depending on what time frame you're coming in a higher time frame you can get in bigger trades smaller time frames be careful of that remember you need to stay small if you're on small stay small okay keep those things in mind but we're entering in right here hopefully everybody understands this okay rather than entering a standard position on the first entry we're now entering in on the two try rule entry only right now this is going to be you know a scenario plus and you know pros and cons you are going to move miss out on some trades there are going to be a lot of these double cross double moves i'm going to show you one in a minute where it goes straight to target without ever having the opportunity to do that second entry that is going to happen but it is also reducing your risk reducing your reward opportunity but also reducing your risk again you have to kind of play this for your own as far as like what you what you're thinking for your plays but this is one opportunity and way to play this trade all right so let's uh pop pack past that mess here and let's go look at an example of one right here where you would have missed out right so if you do do this method yes you're going to miss out on great plays like this one this one did not break the plane at the bottom right where would the stop have been stop would have been underneath here you're entering in right here as you see that second cross we're going long what is our measurement our measurement is from here to here projects out from here to here perfect targeting now you see the double cross up here because this is an ender move this is off times not going to work as a double cross double move anyhow but this is a play where if this play were to come back through stops out underneath and we start to initiate another one we're going to see that here in just a moment i'm going to do this in market replay and we will see how this plays out but this one would have not given you an opportunity for a, a second stop so again these types you're going to miss out everybody got that that's okay that's the types you're gonna miss now again there are some perfect ones like this which is why again not necessarily my recommended method for this i still think that you know uh reward comes with risk you're gonna have to put on some risk and this is one of those scenarios where i love double cross double moves so i'm and again with a larger account this is not going to be a problem but if you're on a smaller account you may have to you know hold out because this could as as we've seen before um whoops hold on a second not sure what happened right there press the wrong button and messed up my obs so we are going to take an entry off of this play right here the price comes down ends up maybe stopping out and kind of working here and then moving on its way up okay this is a type that i'm talking about this would have been awesome but since you didn't get that here there's no re-entry where you could have gotten in right here which would have been a re-entry where you've got part entry one 
This is your second shot, entry two. Now, as it comes back through here, you can also enter here what we just talked about, right? That didn't play off here. Just want to void that out. That these are the types you're going to miss out on. Now, this type, um, let's play this out into the next section here, and we'll see what I'm talking about for double cross opportunities as they push back in. All right, Roman has woken up from a nap here, and he's decided he's wanting to come over, and he's going to try to help us out here with this. So let's make this a little bit larger, and let's take a peek at how this is going to play out. Okay, so let's watch this second um double cross double move opportunity right here so let's first talk about standard double cross scenarios what happens when a double cross is laying right on top of a prz we want to do we want to keep do we do we think our initial play is uh is going to be to the long side on this oops do we think we're just immediately coming up no right we've got that red prz we want to reverse one of these this is a reversal opportunity, right? So a double cross comes right here. I'm gonna to try to take it short for how much, right? T1, T1. Now, if it's with favorable direction here, I might go T1, maybe T2 because I've got favorable direction. So keep that in mind. But at least for me, I'm looking for target ones to the short side on a reversal. Let's uh, press play here on our market replay and let's see how this works out. I'm gonna show you guys what happens as I'm gonna put this up to 10X speed here. And let's see if we got some other plays here. So we're coming into a shark back play right Good here. Dot. Long Nasty opportunity dot. right here. Let's pause it. So we can get long right here. A little bit sketchy because we got this red dot right here. A little bit dangerous. Um, I would like to take this short first. But let's see how this plays out. Remember, thinking about the double cross, double move scenario Good here. Dot. Not Nasty necessarily some of our other Tuesday. plays. Okay. We end up getting the second dot. I always tell you, recency is key. Whenever you have two back to back, this one is now more viable. So we've got red, goes to green. Green is now super in play right here. We've got a shark back HMD to the long side. Plus, what else do we have? We've got a double cross, double move opportunity here, also showing its showing its uh, opportunity right here. So the first time would have been a break and a stop out, but look what happens right now. Can we enter in right here to the long side? Yes, so this is that opportunity that I'm talking about coming back into this play. Now again, that was at 10X speed, so it looked like you couldn't have entered in down here at the bottom, but look at what else we have right here. We had, whoops, sorry, my little guy here is um, wiggling me around, it's very difficult here. So, all right, here we've got the entry one, and then we've got entry two right here. I'm gonna rewind this, and let's try to play this out in real time with actual executions, let's do that. All right, so I've got this down. I'm playing this at 4x speed here. So I've got my finger over the buy. We know we've got our double cross, double move opportunity. Fifth dot. I'm Last looking for it to break right through. I got my red dot. Here comes my green. As the green shows up on the, the bottom Last of that shark, I'm gonna Tuesday. go ahead and enter into my position. Now let's pause right here for a second. So again, market started to pop very, very quickly there and unable to get into my entry there. All right, so let's pause it right here on our market replay and let's take a look at some things going on right here. So we already have our white draw, uh, white lines drawn. You see them coming straight through here. Yeah, make sure that you have those enabled in your settings. If you don't have those um, turned on, go into your indicator settings. You're gonna go down to the crosses, Flowmaster Cross right here and make sure that you've got draw horizontals enabled and i've got mine set to number of horizontals drawn five so that means the last five that way it doesn't clog up your screen with a whole bunch you don't want every cross drawing lines in fact let's count the five that i have right now on screen good thing to note about the crosses so i've got this is the last one right here so one two three four and five so this area is going to be drawing those <clears throat> so the next white cross that shows up <clears throat> excuse me Ugh. Uh, sorry, I've been under the weather the last few days, which is why I couldn't do Mentorship Monday uh, yesterday. I'm feeling a little bit better today, but uh, still a little bit of the choke up here. So right here, this one is going to undo. That horizontal will disappear, and the next one will redraw. So that's how that works. That is a sliding window to the right. Last five are only going to be showing. So the one to the left disappears. So be careful that if you are expecting that that line stays, it won't. That will. If you want one to stay, you need to press F6 and click the button. Right? F6 will draw those horizontal lines for you by default. Okay, so let me go ahead and delete that one real quick. Yes, I'd like to. Okay, a little blip there on removal. I wanna pause it right here and start to pay special attention to what we're about to look at here. A lot of things we're gonna see. So one thing that I see a lot of people doing, um, just watched uh, one of our members recording the other day and before they even entered in, they measured first. Do not measure first, folks. Measurement does not pay you. 
Okay, so putting the measurements out after you've already entered. Do the measurements after you have entered, please. Write this down. I, I thought this was clear, but um, you know, I, I see people like drawing it out, like, oh, let me measure first, and then they enter, and they way behind entries, just crazy stuff like that. All right, I'm gonna state the obvious. Do not do your measurements first. Now, I've got several places to measure here because of the way that this is set up. Again, this is advanced stuff. This is not going to be your standard double crossover move that I've showed you guys before. This is all the rules, all applied, all at the same time in more complex situations where, how do I decide? Uh, since this is double crossover move, it's a second in a series, right, from this one. So where do I measure from? Well, I'm gonna do three measurements. There's nothing harm, there's no harm doing all the measurements so that you have multiple targets. Watch this, okay? I'm going to measure from this pivot it to my center that is my biggest one okay now I'm gonna do another measurement from my previous cross because I tell you guys all the time if you have a prior cross you want to measure from the prior cross right do both and you have this one right here that's in between it so there's not a hard there's no harm in drawing this one either because what are we looking for we're looking for targets what are our targets the gold dashed lines all right so you see these three pay attention I'm gonna measure all of these right now when I say measure, I say I'm using my fib tool, press F8, and I'm gonna do a measurement from each of these pivots to where. This is my end point right here. First cross, okay? All right, here we go. I'm going to do press F8 again. I've already done that one. Next one, I'm gonna do from this cross to the middle of my crosses. You see how I have, so there's target, another target right there. And finally, one more to the middle of these crosses to right here because this could be a shorty right it's right there okay so now that I've got that going now I can start to move my targets to those locations now first one I want to move out um, again I like to grab if you grab the line notice I'm grabbing all of them I see a lot of people going over here I they're clicking tags they're like tag one tag two tag three tag four like if there's a bunch in an area like this you can grab the whole line by clicking the line you see how I'm moving all three now okay grab the line and I'm going to show you a tip here on the next video on how to thicken this line because some people are like well I know that but this is too thin I can't do it right well this has two things you need to increase the accuracy of your mouse maybe slow down the speed of your mouse if you have a hard time clicking on that and having control this is again a video game you need to have full control of your mouse and key movement so I'm going to move these to my targets right now now i want to split some of these out now i can grab my tag so maybe i want some to come off on that first target i've got one at my second maybe two here at my second one uh i think i've got two up there looks like yeah i'm gonna go ahead and click them together right there and now i've got two on well i've got one on each one right so i've got my three set up here because of my size here this is going to be my targeting for um for this one now is it gonna any harm holding it all the way up there no up to you again however your risk level goes this is how i like to execute on these little advanced level stuff gives me multiple targets along the way but i'm also fulfilling the rules and by that i see a lot of you guys too you're doing a double cross double move but you're like you still do like target one target two stuff you don't do that you're ruining your r you're ruining the risk reward ratio on this trade when you do that please stop doing that folks i see a lot of you guys doing this this is what i mean by you have to practice a lot of people just think oh i got this strategy i know how it works if you don't practice you are not going to succeed I i'm going to do another video later this week on what does a successful trader look like because i see a lot of folks that and, and i'll talk to you about the ones who struggle too i'm going to just show it right out like show the things that people say that they do you know a lot of people like you say that you're doing things but you're not okay there's a lot of that that i'm just going to be honest with you guys in that video i'm just going to come down hard um and it's just going to be you know speaking to folks because i know i'm driving you because i care okay i'm not driving you to just be mean i i just don't think like you don't hear it when i say it nicely right so i need to yell it at you a bit and kind of do this little chastisement shake the trees a little bit and get you guys in gear okay so without further ado let's move our stops in the proper locations here remember our we can always mentally put those behind there this is going to start to get a little bit clogged up because i've got three different measurements with all the lines for the fib levels that's okay what is my targeting the main thing that i care about are the gold lines that i put out there let's press play here and watch how this plays out remember we're running this at about 4x speed right here this would normally not be this fast so should have plenty of time in a real market now if i mess this up on this um, market replay what I want to do is I can always pause and rewind and do it again I don't know why I don't think a lot of people do that either if you're doing your market replay practice 
If you didn't do it right, rewind, do it again. Rewind, do it again. I don't know why people have fear going backwards on this. Remember, I'll show you in our videos. Right click, go to. I can go back four minutes back, two minutes back, one minute back, doesn't really matter, okay? So if I'm at 8.51 a.m., okay, I can roll back a little bit farther. I can put this, I can click right here, I can do 48, I can do 49, I can do down to the second. I can roll it back instantaneously and click okay, and it just takes a moment for it to rewind, play it again, okay? In fact, we're gonna do that here just so I'll show you, like, I'm not just uh, I'm not just blowing smoke, okay? We do this, this is how you practice. You need to do these things well. If you practice a bunch of times, then when you do it in real time, it will be easier. All right, don't mean to beat that dead horse, but I think some of you guys know you need that, <laughs> okay? Uh, I've seen a lot of the videos. All right, here we go. Waiting for it. I'm gonna speed this up a little bit. Okay, now I might add to position right here. I've got a, another cross. I'm gonna add to position. Do I really care about where I add uh, those two? No, but I'm gonna go ahead and push it out because I've got time on it. Remember, I gotta think about my stop being below that cross now for that trade. I'm gonna go ahead and put that right there. I got my same finger over the buy. Again, right back where it should be. Let's see how we play here. Fib dot, Dow Jones on the twos. Uh-oh, I got a red dot. So I should be closing part of this position right here. I'm going to close out this position, wait for it. Only that part where I just added, right? Wait for it. I'm gonna speed this up, I'm gonna go 10X speed here. Target filled. Excellent. Harmonic pattern. Yes. On the one Keep target. Going. Okay. There's our targets. Dot. Targets filled. Nasdaq okay. On the fives. Another little spot gets a little bit nervous right here. I'm going to let it play out. Why? Because I've got double cross, double move played in. I'm going to let it go Fib all the way to my targets. Wait for it. Fib dot, Dow got Jones. Got my finger over the buy, the add, I've got a dot here. Fib dot, Nasdaq, on the five, tar tar Excellent. Touching the targets. Fib dot, Dow Jones. Okay, on the got another double dot here, add to position. If I break that dot, I'm gonna close the whole thing. Fib dot. Dow Jones oh, on the red dot. Okay, I'm closing. I like it right here. Um, I don't remember where this is going. I'm gonna speed this along, just kind of see how this played out, see if it ended up getting all the way up to my top. But I'm gonna talk about what happens if what happens if I get up here at this cross. Another play off of the advanced level stuff. What should I do if I get to my final target on one of these? I can scalp the other direction, right? I want to look for a scalp opportunity back the other direction, trying to pick up 10 ticks. Right, or if you are in the ES, we're only trying to pick up five, right? So, uh, again, using tiny, okay? So, up here at the top, I might switch this over. I'm going to switch this to tiny. And if I come back up here and I touch this, I'm going to scalp this back the other direction, all right? Let's see how that plays out. Running at 20x speed. Fib, fib dot. Harmonic nope, pattern. Like Dow Jones. There. Harmonic pattern. NASDAQ. On I don't know if this one ends up going all the way there or not. Let me pause the video and Harmonic we'll see how far pattern. that goes. Fib dot, Dow Jones. All right, so that took a while, uh, but yes, all the way up there, boom. Do you see why I draw those lines in? You see why I leave them? Look at this, to the penny tick, literally touched it. Touched it, did not plan this out. Uh, didn't even on you know, my market replay, I did not look ahead to see if this had gone there or not. Now, people have asked a lot of times, so how long do I leave these here for? How long are these valid? When can I go back and delete these? Some people are, you know, they want the clean chart. I understand the, the desire to have clean charts and things. 
Um, let me show you when you can remove those. Did this come back in the other direction? Yes. Could you scalp off the top of this right here? Boom. Yes. I'm going to try to grab those five or 10 ticks off of the top there. Again, free money. Another place where if you are a, uh, I'll call it that, the nervous trader where you are trying to make sure that you've got every trade and you want to go, okay, I want to, like the hardly any risk. Now, mind you, you're going to miss out on some of the reward. I'm going to, you know, don't want to beat that dead horse. But again, if you are trying to just get every trade that you possibly can and you're doing the second try entry rule place for the, the first entry to eliminate having that first uh, possible stop out, this is another place where let a double cross move play out. Wait until you hit right here. This gold line reversal is a money maker. Again, this is a great place to start picking up bags off of those gold lines. You'll see how many times those pop off. And even if it breaks through, so people have seen me several times. Now, yes, of course, this could make a huge run up, but it, my max loss that I'm gonna be looking at is gonna be a 25 ticks ever, okay? But can I add into this position? Yes, so as a trade comes into this area, oftentimes if this does end up for, you know, the off chance that it does end up pushing up, I will add to this position on every scenario back behind this. So every every spot where if I get that um, if I get that cross show up back here, if I get another cross, I'm adding to position. If I get a dot, I'm adding to that position. Um, does not matter the color or direction for me. I will add to that position until we drop back down and touch that gold line one more time. Um, is often kind of one of my favorite plays off of one of these. Again, another little. Spot that you can play off of those off of double cross double move again a lot of very very cool activity that you can do from double cross so not to lose back on my place when can i remove these when you see another double cross these stay in play until i see another double cross setup show up so i'm going to leave those there when i eventually see another double cross setup over here i can go back and start to clean those up as of right now there is still not a double cross double move let's play through and we'll wait until we see another one and then we'll erase all right, so we're right here through the open now, uh, about three minutes past the open, and again, big explosive move. Again, this doesn't going to happen necessarily every day, but a scenario where now I've well cleared this zone. I can come back here now, and I can remove my drawings. How do I usually remove mine? I like to come in here, right click, and actually go to the drawing tools section, and I click on remove drawing objects. Sometimes I can remove all. Like right now, I've got a whole bunch. I'm just going to go ahead and remove all of them. Boom. There we go. Now that includes my any of my horizontal lines, etc. Don't need those anymore. You can see, remember that five cross rule that I've already set in. So there's one cross. Now I'm seeing my last five. You don't see any more of those show up. So I'll continue to play and we'll start in until we get another double cross, double move. And let's see how things go when we see Fit another double cross. Look, Fit All right, while we're here, I'm gonna go ahead and address one of these issues. Remember, what are our rules? Ask yourself, you should pop quiz and you should know this answer. What is the spacing between double crosses that are gonna be valid? Is this a double cross? Double move play? No, some people might count it as that because it's like, oh, well, they're, you're pretty close to each other in price. Yes, but how many bars apart do these need to be? They need to be very close together within 10 or 15 bars. This is gonna be way more than 10 or 15 bars right here. So this is a no. So please make sure, again, while we're here doing the advanced stuff, don't play those double cross level moves that are well spread apart. Remember, 10 to 15 bars. 15 bars tops. And you need to be able to eyeball those and know how far apart those are. Again, if you don't know that, again, I can eyeball this and I know it because I've seen it and done it hundreds of times, almost probably thousands of times now. You need to get that practice in your head to know which ones are far too far apart. This one you should instantly, if you're a double cross double move player, you become familiar enough to know that's not a double cross double move. It's carry on. Karma, Fib Dot, Dow Jones on the twos. Okay, so here is our next double cross that came in. Is that a double cross double move play? Absolutely not. That is gross. That is a nasty play right there. What about this over here? Some people have asked, Vinny, can we play these as double crosses? Yes, you can. So if you get back to back colors of opposite colors right here, we've got a double cross double move play right here. That again, little hidden gem there for the alpha omegas. Can I measure this out? Yes, let's go ahead and measure. I'm going to press F8. Boom, from the pivot to the center of those crosses. There's my target out top. Now, what can I do up here? I can also take a short right here for a few ticks as well, right? Two ways to play this. If you didn't get in on this or the second entry play on it, that's okay. I've got this opportunity up here. Again, if you don't enter in on this, that's fine. Draw out the golden line, look for a spot right up here to scout back the other direction. Let's see how that plays out. 
ones. All right, very weird play right there. So ends up coming up within a tick or so. This is a very interesting play, how this started to come up. So we had this play. We wanted to put it uh, up to this little zone. Remember how I said that we want to remove them after another double cross double move shows up? So technically, was this a double cross double move? No, this is so ugly. There's just a lot of accumulation type of scenarios right here. We're only a few minutes past the open, so maybe that's part of what was going on there. But we kind of tapped into that area two or three times, didn't actually touch it, so maybe my measurement was slightly off, but we tapped it several times here, and then huge drop off on it. Very, very nice though, that does define that play. And this is what I've kind of told you guys before, is you'll end up, like this is why we play this, and oftentimes you will see that center spot where we get that push and that's the whole point of that zone now nice little opportunity here to take a, a long here we've got our alpha omega inside of a shark back play right here again this is running at 20x speed so nearly impossible for me to try to play this uh, i'm going to go ahead and try to grab some off of it anyways as we start to push up i'm going to see how this plays out for me it may or may not it's okay let's play again it's at 20x target speed so it's gonna be filled. very very fast whoa how did that get a target Harmonic filled long Look for a okay, long. yeah, I think it was too fast. Too fast. Let's let's close that position here. All right, too fast for uh, too fast for it right now. Let's see. All right, but here again, look, where did we touch and where do we turn? Right, right to it, almost to the penny. Right, bottom of the shark back with some boost to it. Then we hit it. Boom. What do we get? Right off the top, we start to come back down. You know, again, this is very, very fast. And let me turn this down. Let me put it down to like um, 2x speed here. See if this is even slow enough. This is 9.38 a.m. We touch it Fifth one dot. more time. Now we have to be careful Fifth once we've done that multiple touch. Can I play this again? No, right? We're starting to bust out of this zone. Now what I would love to see now, we're outside of it. So what can I do? I can go and I can remove my drawing objects, right? So I'm gonna come back in here. Let's go and remove. Drawing tools, remove all objects. Yes, boom, clear it up. All right, so now we're ready. We're ready for more. Now, what do I got? I see the J hook coming in. Target one has already been hit. So since target one hit very quickly, what do we know about a J hook? Now, you know, we're kind of talking about other things. We're supposed to be a double cross double move uh, video here. But again, these are gonna turn into other things. You still need to know what other plays. So what do we know about a J hook? If we go straight to target one, targets two and three are more likely. So I wanna look for setups in the direction of those and use those targets um as this play goes right let's let's see how that plays delta cell building i'm going to speed Fifth it up here Nasdaq go back up to 10x harmonic pattern and this is more about the, the practice here yes on the ones fib dot fib dot doubt part wait for a setup okay harmonic almost pattern. to target Dow two Joe. be dot. careful there because we got on the, the uh alpha omega red pushes down waiting for a green if we're going to push Harmonic back up pattern. to hit target Dow two, Joe. we need Fib some dot. long. Russell. We need a long entry. That's just a bat. Can't Fib play dot. it. Here's king Harmonic timing. Fib dot. Any setup? Fib dot. There's go. There's one right there. HMD. Harmonic oh, pattern. but gets Dow wrecked Jones. by a red Harmonic right back behind it. Fib and the drop. Fib dot. Dow All right. So point two to talk about with those. When you get those back to back dots again, that second play so crucial to try to take that second one and close out your first one. Again, this is super fast, so you couldn't have reacted at 20x speed on NASDAQ. But if this happens to you in real time, it's going to be slower. You will have that opportunity, or this could be a play for you. If you see one uh, green dot at an HMD and immediately see the other color, this can be another great play to take the opposite color dot scenario. So we're going, you would think, okay, I've got the HMD green, boom. The second one shows up, it's an op opposite color. Flip that script, press the reverse button, go back the other way, or, if you want to actually wait for this, don't take the first HMD. Always wait for one of these. If that's your type of play style, boom, take the opposite color and just, wow, huge smasher off of that play there. Carry on. All right, haven't seen another double cross double move since those last ones, but along the way, what did we see? We got this beautiful shark back play that showed up with a shark tail, turns into a shark tail. Beautiful, again, this is a valid um, shark tail. Got some, um, entry point back behind a shark so this would be whether it's a dot or a cross in this case it is an alpha some again a lot of stuff around the alpha omegas need to be added to uh, some of our uh, new training that's coming out but this is an example right here shark tail boom take the tail boom target one into the shark carry on whatever you want on the runners um, it would be cool to get, you want to wait for another green dot. This is your first green dot afterwards. You got the cipher to add to position here. There's your full exit on that play 
right there on this one right here. I know it's like, oh, well, wouldn't it be cool to get that? Yeah, but what are we doing for? Af after I'm entered in on one of these, my runner, my runner is going to exit after I've got an opposing signal. Boom, right there, there's your green dot for the exit after target one right here. This doesn't look like much, but again, remember this is the threes. So uh, from this entry back here, this is 145 to the beginning of this to 38, that's gonna be seven times four. So that's 24 ticks just to target one on that shark tail play right there to the front of the shark. 24 ticks, that's great. Now you get the continuation from there to there. It's gonna be another 20 or so. And if you include the ad on the cipher, again, it's gonna be a very, very big play for more than 50 to 60 tick collections there for that shark tail play. Very, very nice. Let's carry on again. We're gonna play this to 10:10. Uh, we're right about, uh, we're at 10 minutes, 9.51, 10 minutes till the 10 o'clock. And then we got the basically 20 minutes left here playing at high speed, let's go. All right, and along our way, be crazy not to take that setup. Again, it was so fast, couldn't enter in at 20x speed, but saw the Cypher show up with a power headshot back behind it to the long side. Target one, easy. Target two, we're going with favorable direction. Final runner there comes all the way to our king timing right there with the red dot. Beautiful play there at that was 9.53 run to 9.54 less than well one minute uh and entries here you're talking about let's roll it down to 29s for simple numbers to 46s so you've got again another 24 um uh, actually it's 28 28 ticks there for that move amazing amazing stuff there carry on all right, I want to point out another one of those back-to-back -back dot plays. So you get the green dot, boom, immediately followed by an opposing color dot, boom. Look at that setup here. We're going to talk about this in a separate video, but I just want to point out another one of these where you've got the opposing dot signal here. You've got the green almost immediately followed by the other color. That can oftentimes at least get you target one, oftentimes target two off of those plays. Tends to be the stronger move is that secondary dot. Remember our rule that says recency is key. What is the most recent? right the most recent one comes out boom pink dot bam what's the timing this is the timing lines we've got the large king timing with this double dot scenario of the opposing color boom drops down pow into a diamond target down below very nice play right there all right super super high fat high speed here and finally get a double cross double move play here we got the straight leg coming through we've got our two crosses in between let's get our measurements to see how that played out so we're playing f8 we're going from the go to the center of the crosses boom look at that so right down into it want to take that reversal boom try to get 10 ticks out of it looks like again freebie there exit off of the shark uh, again, you don't need much for getting that 10 tick. So that's, um, let's just play it down to even numbers. 102, even if you're behind it. So at 102 and we are running into the shark. That's, that's six times four. That's 24 ticks right there. Once again, 24 ticks all the way up. Are, is that enough to get 10 out of? Yes, 10 bagger off of the threes. Uh, very nice play. Double cross on the move once again. Boom. Reversal. Take your pick. Now, this is a type that if you are going to do that play that I've just talked about where you're going to be looking for a second entry, do you get one of those? No. Right. Uh, this one came through. Boom. Straight through. So, again, you are going to miss out on these. That's what I want to point out here. That's our really focusing it on double cross players here today on this video. Again, we threw in some other stuff. Hopefully, this was super helpful to you. We're almost here to the 1010. We're at 957 a.m. So, keep track of that. Let's carry on. All right, so let's point out what would have been a loser right here. Well, we go from first, we hit the headshot short after a uh, king timing. Nice play down into the shark, close out position. You might think, oh, well, I might want to take this shark PRZ uh, cross to the long side. Sure, I would possibly take that. It ends up being a stop out here, so small loser. Again, on one of these plays, so you're entering in, shark back play. There's your stop. Little bitty tiny stops on these. Very, very nice. Again, a little bit of a loser right there. That's okay. Next one, what do we get? We get this move up out of nowhere. Again, no play here. You can't really take that diamond, it, but you can see the formations. When you see that, I kind of call that like the, the sword blade. Uh, looks like you could kind of grab the sword blade right here. Let me kind of draw it here the way that I kind of picture these. Uh, if I can get my drawing tool going, yellow. So I, I envision a uh, bit of a, a handle on a sword and then that 
boom that knife piece coming out like that um kind of looks like this a little bit of a it's like an elongated beehive uh, i really don't talk about this too much but you'll see this a lot if you kind of start looking back you almost have one starting in right here where you get this elongated beehive action going where you can just see like there's a fight there trying to push it down up push it down up push it in there just there's just a little bit of a battle going on right there you can see the um triple delta flag again lots of activity coming right there looking for the shift and the push up off of it no surprise there because of the size and magnitude of that coming in getting people off sides right there been big drop move and then pow that sucker just wrecks them up in the other direction moving up moving up moving up but what do we got bam past double king timing next entry what do we get a power dot headshot to the short side exiting inside of your green prz beautiful play there might be the last play of the day that's right there at 10 a.m let's see how that goes all right so while this played out again very very quick action here this is again all in one minute right here it's happened although it happened even faster at 20x speed there was a headshot right past a king timing line now i want to remind you of remember when we drew these lines when did i draw where and when did that gold line come to be back here at this double cross opportunity, right? So double cross, double move, boom, there's the gold line. We got the first reversal off. Now we just leave it there, because what did I say? We want to remove it after we are either well out of that zone, right? Or the next double cross. Have we seen a double cross yet? No. So what's interesting is, is, so did this help us out? Well, we've played that gold line several times already. Look, another touch of it, and then we got an actual entry. Can I take this? No. Can I take this? Yes. Why? Because that is a headshot entry play. Can we take it to the long side? Yes. Do we? It, does it come out even on the pullback? Does it stop out? No. Still inside of the cross line. Again, what happens on a headshot? We're entering in right here. Where's our stop? Right there back behind the bottom of the cross, which is actually going to be right here. And it's also underneath that gold line. Great opportunity. It's also coming right around that gold line. I just want to point out, this is a cool spot. And why I want to leave those drawings there for a little bit. Don't be so quick to remove those, but you want to remove them after you know for a fact that we are no longer there and in play. Have we seen another double cross, double move yet on that? No. Have we even seen an alpha omega to say that we've got a new um, imbalance? No. So is it still in play? Yes. The rest of this is just, this means we are in accumulation zone here. Let's play it as such. Okay, carry on. All right, so now as we start to see, boom, we are busting out of that zone now. I can see the huge, huge delta flagging come in. This is now over. Do you see how now that I'm going to bust out of this zone outside of the gold cross lines on a, I know it looked like, well, we busted out here. Vinny, how come this doesn't count? Again, it really didn't push out hard. We didn't have a major delta point or anything like that. We're right back inside that zone, but now, I would say this is over. Again, I don't know the future. I haven't looked at this market replay. I'm just telling you how I read this is now that is a 36.8. That is huge on this sucker here. And we're busting outside of that line. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove drawing objects. Right click. I'm going to go to my drawing tools, uh, which is off the screen. Let's carry it again. Drawing objects and remove all drawing objects. Yes. Boom. All right. Cleared it out. And let's carry forward again. We should be real close. We're at uh, that 10.08 coming in here on us. Uh, I'm not quite there yet. We're at 10.03. And uh, yeah, let's see how we go. All right, and then that is probably your final play of the day here. So again, you know you're approaching 10.10. Uh, I wouldn't uh, fault you if you were looking at this and going, this would have occurred right at about 10.06, 10.05. You're coming really, really close to it. You see the J-hook play out. You've got a red dot opportunity to enter. You've got more dots coming in, double dots entry to add to position with your targets down below on your J-hook. Uh, again, if you guys are new with us, you don't know what this is, here is your J-hook play. We've got that awesome entry opportunity here. We've got the headshot to the short side. Now we've got our entries here to add to. It's not just a J-hook. We've got entries inside of the J-hook. So it's J-hook plus double dots. Again, I usually tell people like, don't take uh, just a naked J-hook by itself. Look at the J-hook, play it after you see an entry point in the direction of those targets. Look at this beautiful craziness right here. Boom, if you close it out fully right there, I wouldn't felt you on that. This is probably where I'm exiting right here if I see a giant delta like that, because you know that that can oftentimes signal 
<clears throat> some kind of reversal opportunity in there as well. Looks like they shake him out a little bit farther, go into a Diamond Crab. I have imagined, well, just looking at the way that that's playing in, there might be a three-minute opportunity to play it right back up into this zone here, but very, very nice play. Probably final one right before the 10-10 there. Let's see if we're right. And yes, wow, look at that Alpha Omega power. So ends up calling it. There's your line here. We come back up and through it. We got that big spike down. Nice little, um, got like a bat wing going on here. Again, I'm not really a bat wing player too much anymore, but you can see the bat wing in there. More importantly, that you have that imbalance that fired off right there. You've had a prior one that was even larger. And now we've come back in, final spot here, big, big drops down, signifying an opportunity for a fake out, shake out. You catch people off sides. Now we've got a diamond plus a crab right there for the move. You can see the spikiness of it, that little fakey moves, fakey moves, and lots of folks getting wrecked on the other side of that. And we end up pushing back up all the way to the other side. Here's the alpha, there's the omega, and we are coming in 10 Oh, 09 that is going to be your final play there and hopefully you guys got a lot out of this one the next video i'm going to show one more thing about the double cross double moves but i want to put it in a separate one because it's about creating an atm that's custom for double cross double moves so stay tuned for that one you are not going to want to miss it thanks for hanging out with me on this one i will catch you in the next one